Scott here. I've got a short video for you on how to change the rear rotors on a W164 ML320 ML350 SUV. Uh, it's quite a straightforward uh, project, so I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching. First thing is we'll remove the clip. Um, so that little bit there has got a, a hook so like that. They, so you have to move it. I think you have to kind of move it that way. Yeah. Do you need a small... Then you can unplug the wear sensor. Next step is with a 7mm hex key or a T45 is to undo the two caliper pins. One at the top, one at the bottom. So once the caliper pins have been undone, just grab them with needle nose pliers and pull them out. The top one and the bottom one. So now we're putting a screwdriver in between the pad and the rotor and levering the piston back inside the caliper body a little bit so we can get the caliper over the wear groove on the rotor. So now you can slide the caliper off. Great. It's hard to do that bottom one because you can't see what you're doing. Yeah. So now we've got the caliper off, we have to remove this bracket, the caliper mounting bracket, and there's two 18mm bolts to undo. So there's one up here and there's one down the bottom. 18 millimeter bolt and we're, we've got the breaker bar on there. It's very tight. So we're going to use the foot. That's undoing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's right. We can just pull that bracket off. Now we're undoing the T30 bolt and screw. So we required a bit of heat to get this off and some wacky with the rubber mallet. Excellent. So you can see how the uh, handbrake mechanism is um, the old style brake shoes. That's the adjuster there. So now we're giving the <coughs> rotor a good wipe down with wax and grease remover to get the protective coating off. Now we're smearing some uh, copper-based anti-seized grease around the hub there so the rotor doesn't get stuck. So now we can slip the rotor back on. And remember to line up the hole that has the little 30mm Torx screw. Now we're going to adjust the handbrake pads. So we're pushing the adjuster down until the pads contact the inside of the drum and then you back them off with the dust cap back in for the handbrake adjuster. There's plenty of threads on the caliper bracket mounting bolts. Just putting a small amount of Loctite on the end of the bolt. Yeah, that's plenty. Bracket's going back on. So we're just tightening them with the small ratchet. And then we're going to torque them to about 120 Newton meters. 
torque wrench onto this now and we're tightening them to 120 newton meters. No, because it'll make a real proper click. That's it. That was a click on the top one. That's it. Just putting the outside pad into position that just uh, slips into the, the bracket. Yep. And now we should be able to slide the caliper over on top of that. So these pins here were very, very dry. So we've cleaned them up on the um, wire wheel on the bench grinder and we're going to put new ceramic grease on them. It's very important these um, sliding pins allow the caliper to move freely because that's how the forces are transferred over to the other side. back in. That's it. Doesn't need to be very tight. So just test that caliper a bit. You should be able to push that backwards and forwards. In the car? No, just down here. Just push it backwards and forwards like that and just see how well it slides nice and freely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so that's how your caliper should move. Um, when the piston's wound right back in, you should be able to just slide that caliper backwards and forwards on those sliding pins. The last step is to put the little anti-rattle clip back into place. Okay, that's it, that's done. And the wheel's back on. So now we're talking the wheel nuts to 110 newton meters. 